Rub up your engines! DC Tech 09 says, Scotty, I'm thinking about going from an F-150 to a 4Runner. I got a 2014 F-150 with 84,000 miles, but I want to do vehicle camping overland. I'm looking at 4Runners, but even the used ones aren't cheap. Should I wait till they scum back? Here's the thing. I was hoping the prices will come down, but... I kind of doubt it for the foreseeable future. Seeing what's happening politically and economically in the United States, it looks like we're in for a run of hyperinflation. Inflation seems to be rearing its ugly head. And I mean, I grew up Richard Nixon time when he was president and inflation went bananas with him. You couldn't get a job. Inflation was all over the place. The interest rates started to get real high. And unfortunately, I think that's going to happen. I don't think the price is going to come down anytime in a foreseeable future. You got the chip shortage, so then they make less vehicles. So the price of the new ones goes up because there aren't that many to sell. And then the used car prices always follow new car prices. If new cars go higher, everyone just a raises what they're asking for used ones. It's just like houses. If the price of new houses goes ways up, guess what? The price of used houses follows it right right up. I've seen it where people are paying almost the same price or more for a used vehicle and a brand new one would cost because they can't even get the brand new one and they want a vehicle now. So unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be coming down anytime soon. It looks like hyperinflation is going to really take a, a wild ride and then everything gets up. Let's hope it doesn't get like the Weimar Republic did in Germany where it was like a billion marks to buy a loaf of bread and the Germans were coming to wheelbarrows full of paper money to buy bread at the grocery store. I don't think it'll go that far. But I don't see it coming down anytime soon. It just doesn't look like it will with the way that policies are going and just doesn't. So I don't think waiting is going to be a good policy for a while because it might be years before they start coming back down again. Wooden Bet says my roommate has an 07 Toyota Solera with the 2.4 liter engine, 247,000 miles. We start changing the oil every 3,000 miles because it gets noisy if I push it too much. Should I make heavier oil? Should I stick to oil changes every three with a regular 020? Stick to the regular oil that you've been using because look 247,000 miles it works it was designed for that that starts up lubricates if you put a heavier oil in when you start it up the timing chain might not pop out fast enough the tensioner so it might make that Toyota kind when you first start it up and that causes wear it's working fine stick to the original oil change it as frequently as you have and be real happy because a lot of those 2.4 liter engines in 2007 were massive oil burners and if yours isn't continue to use the oil it was designed for and change it regularly you know, you're changing it every 3,000 miles, and that's probably why it's lasts so long. The main problem with a lot of these were the people didn't change the oil enough, and the rings were weak, but not changing enough made them wear and burn oil like mad. So no, change it every three. You're getting your money's worth, just keep doing that. Don't put in heavier oil, it'll make it wear out faster. Dasky 470 says, I got a 2001 Honda Odyssey. I'm worried about automatic transmission. It's got 265,000 kilometers. Now, most of the time, it shifts good. I know they have weak transmissions, and about 20% of the time, it won't shift into second until I'm up to three to 4,000 RPMs. They had failures in those things up the wazoo. My advice is, baby it. It's an 01 Odyssey. It's not worth doing a tranny because you're going to spend anywhere from 3,500 to 5,500 bucks replacing a transmission. And you'll probably get a one or two year warranty with the work at most. When it has to warm up, shifts rough in the second. That shows that it's wearing out. It's always shifting first to second that beats those trannies. That's when they show the first wear. Baby it. Full of fluid and baby the thing. You never know how long it's going to last. If you baby it, it could last quite some time, but it was a design flaw. They weren't built that well. But on the other hand, it had a real strong Honda V6 engine in it, right? A lot of power, and it would burn the transmissions out. It was a design flaw. I didn't build them right in the first place. But if you baby it and don't accelerate too fast, maybe it'll last a lot longer. It's a 21-year-old Honda Odyssey van. If you baby it, you might get some more time out of it. Don't put a bunch of money into it. Though. It's not worth it because those are bad transmissions. You get a rebuilt one or one, it's not going to last all that long. I just say good by when it finally does crap out. When it does crap out, you'll know. It'll clunk, clunk, and then it won't even go down the road, and then you just junk the thing. Well, I guess this woman thought, hey, I'm drunk. I'll let the car drive, having her Tesla drive itself when it ran into something. Now, of course, this is in Southern California. Where else would it happen, right? They believe that she passed out drunk. The car was on autopilot, and then it slammed into a freeway wall. Yet again, you know, these things really don't have such great stuff. I've seen problems when I was in Houston of that they 
get in underpasses and then the walls confuse them. So a 31 year old woman had her Tesla and passed out because the car was driving itself, smashed into a wall. Then the police found her passed out. Now after the Tesla hit the wall, then it kept driving and the police pulled in front of it and then its system worked and it stopped itself. Now I guess her husband figured it out because they got a dispatch call from the police where this woman's husband said, my wife is unconscious in a Tesla and it's driving itself. Well, indeed she was unconscious, but of course they did a test of her and found out she was, you know, over the limit. California Highway Patrol, the chip boys, they got her out, they woke her up, they gave her a sobriety test, which she failed. Be interested to see what happened with the whole story because as we all know, you know, Tesla's cost a lot of money and I suppose she'll probably get a good lawyer and figure out a way to get out of the stupid thing. The idea that you're supposed to have a designated driver, in her case, she thought, well, I'll let the car be the designated driver, but it didn't work out all that well. Because as we all know by now, those self-driving things don't work all that well. So don't get drunk and decide, oh, give the keys to your car. Well, in case you don't have keys with Tesla, give the card to your car and let it drive you home, but you probably won't make it. <laughs> Now, of course, BMW is going insane with technology. Their new iDrive 8 has a customizable experience that includes talking spheres of light. Yes, this isn't a science fiction movie. This is the Germans. They make it all go through, of course, the one handy medium, their screen, because they said if we didn't, the cabin would look like a Gemini spacecraft for all the things it would do and need gauges and dials everywhere. Now, since they started the BMW iDrive, this is now i8. This is the eighth version of iDrive. Their system is basically almost a pillar to pillar system. It's not as fancy as the Byton EV if you've ever seen uh, prototypes of that which has a pillar screen. It looks like a portable fish tank. It's humongous, right? But that's still delayed. It's not actually in production yet. This is. And of course you can configure it any way you want. It's an electronic computer screen. If you want to look at just speed or RPM, you can make that the big one in front of you that you see. You can configure it any way you want. If you can figure out how to do it with German cars, it might take a while to figure out how to do it. But hilarious enough with all this globes of light and crazy stuff. And one guy who tested it out, which is absolutely hilarious, is that the voice recognition didn't work very well. I tried several times to get it to play music. It did respond eventually, but it didn't understand what rock and roll was. But it did know classical. When he said classical, play classical. So there's the Germans for you, yeah? <laughs> Maybe if he spoke German, Sprechen Sie Deutsch, then it would have listened to him. Maybe it's not that good with English, but you're going to have to learn German to operate it correctly. Who knows? But that's BMW for you. Their level of technology is so insane. When you talk to the personal assistant, it appears as spheres of light on the screen, like the aliens in the Star Trek, the original one, just spheres of light, right? And it says, these spheres of light, and I quote, can engage in natural dialogue with the driver and front passenger. Similarly, to a relationship between humans. So if you want to talk to some spheres of light and you got all kinds of money, maybe fork out, you know, a hundred grand or more for one of these BMWs. <laughs> Joe Buck says, I got a Honda Civic and I put a ham radio in it. It's a two meter radio that transmits on 145 to 147 megahertz and it transmits up to 80 watts. You think that might damage the electronic components of my 2013 Civic? You know, I don't think so because those are short wave frequencies and I don't think that that's going to interfere with anything on the car whatsoever. And plus you got a 2013 Civic. It's relatively simple compared to the new ones that have all kinds of interfaces on them. I would say you wouldn't have any problems at all. I'd got in Houston who had ham radio on his on Civic years ago and he never had any problems driving it around. As long as you keep a good enough charging, I might put a bigger battery in the car because those Civics come with these little tiny batteries because Honda wants to save money building them with small batteries. I would change the battery, but other than that, it'd probably work okay. Win 3030 says, I got a UK built 2005 Honda Civic CRV. It shuttles a little at 42 miles an hour in light throttle on level roads, like the converter's trying to lock up. We got it for nothing from a sister who retired. Now, it's made in the UK. We didn't pay anything for it. Should I fix the transmission? Such a minor thing there. Find a good Honda transmission mechanics. Have them check it out. Could it be as simple as the solenoid's going bad, or maybe the fluid needs to be changed? Could easily be something like that. Those transmissions and Hondas, if it actually needed rebuilding, that'll cost you anywhere in the United States from 3,500 to 5,500 bucks. I wouldn't throw money into that if I were you. Got it for nothing. Why put that kind of money into it? Now, I mean, like if you're a gambling guy, I'm sure you got junkyards like here in the United States. Go to a junkyard, you could have a used transmission, but I wouldn't do anything as long as it went down the road. If it gets a little shutter, who cares? 17 year old Honda, shutters a little. I've had them shutter for years on customers. They still ran okay. And like I said, have a training guy check it because sometimes there's reprogramming that can be done to the transmission to make it 
shift better. Lots of stuff can be done. You might try that first, but you're going to have to find a Honda transmission expert. Other guys don't know anything about Honda transmissions. They're more like motorcycle transmissions than car transmissions. So you need a Honda expert to check it out. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.